Yuck Fu by Jaron Benton. Almost a year to the day ago, Jaron Benton dropped his last album, The Mint Coat Killer. Earlier this year, he collaborated with One Week Notice to make a supergroup. Six months later, he is signed with major label Rock Nation and Universal. Produced by Kato, how do we feel about Jaron Benton's fourth studio album, Yuck Fu? Yuck Fu by Jaron Benton. I feel about this ar- album artwork. It's pretty dope. You know, I like the red, how the red pops out. And I like the uh, Yuck Fu restaurant in the background. <clears throat> I don't know if that was like real or it was just created, but it's pretty dope. I'm assuming it was created. Yeah. That's just my assumption, <laughs> you know. But yeah, I, I like it, man. You know, it's got like more like an old school looking BMW or Acura. I'm not really sure because his foot is blocking the symbol. Yeah. But it looks like an old BM or, or Act. So, yeah, and you know the red jacket. I don't like the Yeezys, but you know. <laughs> aside from that, you know, he got like a little furry looking hat on. Yeah. You right. know, like he's coming from Russia or something. Right, right. No disrespect to Russians. Cause y'all motherfuckers be tripping. <laughs> All right, man. How you feel about the Florida album? Uh, you know, I feel like it was pretty consistent. I feel like he went for the same kind of tone, same kind of beat, vibe, or whatever you want to call it. Um, you know, it stayed consistent. It didn't really veer off too much. I mean, I guess you could say the shooter was kind of where it kind of toned it down a little bit. But then as soon as that track was over, it kicked back up. So, yeah. Yeah, I feel like Kato kind of laid some, like, dark, sinister, trap-style, melodical melodies yeah. that he, he put down. That's, that was pretty much the direction of the majority of the beats here. Yeah. So, for the most part, yeah, everything kind of flowed consistently with that vibe. Yep. Highlights, man. For me, the highlights of this album were Money Bad featuring Jay Park. thought that was dope. And Don't Need You featuring Hobson. Yeah. Those were like my two favorite joints. You know, I do like, aside from that, a lot of the conversational talk that he had throughout the projects, like addressing, you know, the issues that he had with his wife, you know, uh, wanting to raise his son right and everything like that. Just, just real talk. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Right. I could always appreciate real talk. But yeah, those are my highlights, man. How about you? Yeah, I'm in the same bag. You know, uh, I'll add Collide onto that. I really like how he started off the album. I thought it set the tone for like what it was going to be because it seemed like, you know, you know, with the skit, you know, he kind of set, you know, the fuck you tone and everything like that. Really, he's just about to just do whatever you want. He's just about to flow on these beats and just give it to you. And I feel like he did that with Collide, Money Bag, and Don't Need You. Like he really gave you that hard hitting kind of sound, but gave you that wordplay as well. Low lights, man. Oh, man. I, I like Godzilla when he's rapping, but I hate the hook, man. The hook was trash. I feel like I know there's probably going to be some type of crowd that will get into that, you know, to get real amped and pumped. But, I feel like that was for the young crowd. Yeah. But I like his flow on it, like especially what he did with the first verse. I thought it was cool. And B.O.B. came, and I felt like that was the perfect pocket for B.O.B. Like that's just his style. That's perfect for him. Uh, other than that, Chewbacca, we can get that out of here. I really didn't, wasn't feeling that. And um, just like you, I felt like it was, it, I don't feel like it was really needed, but it was it was okay. Yeah, man, I agree with you 100%. The Godzilla hook, like, I can see it, it's cool in settings. You know, it's, it's not necessarily good for every setting, but right. uh, I definitely love the B.O.B. feature on there. Right. And then uh, Chewbacca, like you said, I can do without Chewbacca. And also, I, I can do without the simplicity of the flow that he chose to dumb it down. Because if you go back and you listen to me, Cole Keller, like, he was on it. Man. Like, he was attacking it how he usually attacks his freestyles and stuff like that. Right. And I feel like on this one, he, he went for a more ATL sound. Like, you know, the sound that it seemed like he was trying to differentiate himself right. from being right. from Atlanta. And, like, I, at times, I, I found myself thinking that I was listening to B.O.B. rap. Mm-hmm. Like, cause like uh, there were times where he sounded like Bob, and I thought it was funny when I'm listening to Godzilla and his rap. He rapped exactly like Bob, and then next thing I know, I'm like, "Yo, 
this person sounds exactly like B.O.B. And then I looked on the phone and I saw that it was actually B.O.B. Right. So, you know, I, I like to see Jaron Benton when he's like basically exceeding expectations. Yeah. Like this right here, I, I'm pretty sure he can do this with his eyes closed. Like this, this isn't much of a challenge to him. Right, right. But he still did his thing throughout the project. I just know he can do way better. Final thoughts for this project, man. It's a dope project throughout for the most part. But it's got some points in here like the long sk- the long intro. The intro is cool the first time you listen to it, but aside from that, you don't necessarily need to hear it again, so you'll just be going straight to Collide. Yeah. Like Collide was cool. It it just it kind of just gave me this I'm going for the Meek Mill intro sound. Mm. Like that that's the only reason why I didn't mention it cuz it's a dope song. He killed it. You know what I'm saying? Like the lyrics on this project aren't aren't really the issue. It's mm. like the cadences he chose to use, production. The, the flow. The, I, I didn't hate the production. Mm-hmm. I just wish the production would have changed up a little bit, and they kind of would have took us on a ride. But I guess if the project is technically called "Fuck You," then it, it needs to kind of signify that throughout the project. But that's basically my overall thoughts of the project. Yeah, I, I feel like like you said. And I, oh my bad, Out the Mud. I thought Out the Mud was pretty cool. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I feel like, like you said, Yuck, Yuck Fu was like this perfect start to just say, you know, I'm going to do what I want on here. This is just going to be a hype album, blah, 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 blah. But as for me, you know, I feel like there's going to be a lot of uh, uh, listeners that cater to this sound, like that, that love this sound, that loves this flow, that loves this sound. But after the Mink uh, Mink Co. Killer, like, that's like the mold I personally love Jaren in. But I can understand why a lot of people might like this because, you know, it, it, it caters to that style and he's just giving you the quick, witty flows and everything, the speed flows, changing your voice up and everything like that. And he's keeping you entertained. So I understand why people may like it. But if you are a fan of his last project like me, you might be a little bit turned down, but it's still an enjoyable project. Great, man. How you grade this joint? I'm just going to give it a check because I feel like there's some stuff you can still check out here, even if, you know, you're not particularly found, fond of the sound. You know, I, I feel like there's still something here. I feel like he's still giving us uh, good music to listen to. It's just, you know, my personal taste. I wouldn't probably go back and listen to it again myself, but I feel like there are a lot of people that might listen to this again. So I won't just judge it off of my you know, personal taste. But I feel like for this kind of sound, he kind of nailed it. And it's only, what, nine tracks, really. So it's really a focused bunch of music that really didn't give you, like, you know, too much or too little. Yeah, I'm going to give it a dash, man. I feel like no. it's good for the younger crowd. Okay. Like, if you're you're of the younger crowd and you want to listen to this Jaron Benson project, I feel like you'll give it a check. Mm-hmm. But for everybody else that's used to how Jaren's rapped and, and has followed him throughout his career, I feel like you'll give it a dash because there's some dope things here. Yeah. But overall, I'd recommend his last project that came out, like I said, like a full year ago. Yeah. The Minko Killer, because that joint was ridiculous. So and, is, is this his first project on Rock Nation? Yes. Okay. This is his Rock Nation debut. I don't know if Jay told him to, you know, dumb it down, but I know Jay wouldn't. Yeah. So... I mean, nah, he, he kind of did. Jay, Jay kind of dumbed his style down. Yeah. You know, truthfully, I want to rhyme like common sense. But uh, it's it's still stuff up here worth checking out. I just know that he can do better. I and I, I, I didn't necessarily need this, the dumb down flow. But that works for this generation of fans. Yeah. 